All right. And I'm going to go back to my dodge tool. And the first thing I want to do is down here at the bottom, I actually want to brighten up the logo here a little bit. Now, in the actual picture that I did, I did uh, do a little bit more editing and just changed the name of the building to Garahawk instead of uh, Niagara Mohawk because I didn't want to use their exact name. But for now, um, I'm just going to brighten this up. And the dodge tool works almost exactly the same as a, uh, any kind of brush in Photoshop. So I'm just going to kind of click. Oops. Sorry. Make sure you're on your picture. Duh. And I'm just going to kind of hold my mouse down and actually paint right over that. Now this is really subtle, but if I step backwards, you can actually see how we brightened it up. I'm stepping forward again. All right. And I think I'm actually going to bump up the exposure here a little bit to about 15%. I want it to be a little bit more extreme. So now what I'm going to do is kind of go through some of the parts of this building that I want to be brightened up and a little bit more, um, you know, a little more highlighted. So you can see here, I'm just kind of clicking and painting on these parts of the building. And now, traditionally, if you're touching up photos, this would probably give you a pretty undesirable effect. But in the context of Sin City and you know graphic art, comic books, and that kind of thing, it can actually give you a pretty cool effect. You know, it doesn't make it look real, but that's not necessarily what we're going for right now. So basically, if you can see here, I'm just going to kind of touching up and watch how this gets brightened up. And you can use this just about on every single picture you've got, as long as it's, you know, clear in focus. You know, some pictures work a little bit better than others, obviously, but you can experiment. And it's actually pretty easy, pretty fun. And you can totally get that Sin City effect very easily by doing this. Um, I thought just because, you know, new movies coming out soon, I haven't really seen any other tutorial videos on uh, YouTube about doing this, at least any ones that are any good. And I thought there would probably be some people that wanted to know how to do this with their own pictures. Although I'm pretty sure at some point there'll probably be like an iPhone app or something that does it in like two seconds. So you can see I'm just kind of brightening up areas of this building. Now what's cool about this too, you notice the area of the, um, the building up here at the top. When I took the original picture, if I go back to that, you know, it's a bright sunny day and this is actually, it's all chrome, you know, really awesome Art Deco style, but it's already kind of highlighted by the sun. So the dodge tool can actually be used to, you know, make things that are bright, you know, almost, uh, almost a little too bright to the point of where it looks like they're glowing. All right, so I can kind of go around here. Again, if you make a mistake, you can always do undo in Photoshop, which is Alt Command Z. So let's zoom out here and see how this is looking. All right, it's already looking pretty cool. Um, so what I'm going to do next is to show you something else you can do really quick, and this is really going to depend on your picture. At the moment, I only have one layer of black that is affecting this picture. All right, watch what happens if I make a copy just by right-clicking, duplicate layer. I'm going to make a copy of this right on top. So you can see there, just by adding another layer of black on top of my original one, that's also set to overlay, the um, overall uh, dramatic effect is definitely you know increased quite a bit. Um, now, sometimes what will happen is, you know maybe your pictures are too light, too dark. And in this case, when I added this second layer of black on top of it, um, it's getting a little bit more to where I want it, but that was actually a little too much. So all I'm going to do with this second layer that I added is take my opacity slider and I'm actually just going to bring that down a little bit because I want the sky to be a little dark. But I want to keep some of the details of the building there. So now that I've got that second layer, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch the whole thing, but I would probably go back through now that I've got it looking a little bit darker and actually continue to brighten up those areas of the building that I want to be brightened. And the dodge tool is actually, um, it's a lot of fun because sometimes you can pull back in details of a photo you just never even knew were there. Um, it's actually kind of creepy sometimes. If you've ever seen, you know, like Law and Order or any of those stupid cop shows where they're like, you know, zoom in and enhance and they like 
pull this figure out of the darkness that wasn't there a second ago. Sometimes you can actually do that. Um, so we're kind of getting there. You know, it's starting to look a little bit more uh, comic book like. Really cool. Definitely has that Sin City vibe. Um, really, all I would probably do at this point is just kind of continue doing the exact same thing and brighten up, brightening up those areas of the picture. And there was one touch that I added onto my original one, which was to replace the sky up here. Because right now, you know, it doesn't look bad. It's kind of like a dark sky, very ominous. But I actually want to add in something that's a little bit more surreal, and I want to bring in some clouds. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually take... Um, let's see here. I'm going to bring in a photograph from the original shoot, which was just, um, let's see here. Um, you can see it right here. I'm going to open it up real quick. Yeah, how exciting, right? Picture of waves. Sweet. Uh, so this was just a picture of, I think it was Lake Ontario or something that I took a while back and kind of did some of the same techniques on it. Um, gave it a almost like a tilt shift effect and made it look a little bit more you know, I guess Sin City like, but what I want to do is I want to bring in these clouds and I'm going to place them behind the building. So let's go back into full screen mode by hitting F. Now to bring a picture in to Photoshop, um, if I wanted to open up something and edit it completely separate from this project, I would go into file open, but I actually just want to drop this picture into my pre-existing project. So I'm going to select place. And I'm then going to go to that file, which is on my desktop. And I think it's this one right here. Yep. And I'm going to select place. Ah, uh, so I dropped it in. You can obviously see at the moment, it doesn't look anything like what it did a second ago. And if I look over at my layers window, I can see that, Hey, this dropped in underneath those two black layers that I have. So I'm going to, in a second, bring that up to the top. But first, I have to hit return to get out of free transform mode. I'm going to drag that up here. Looking pretty cool. And perfect, we're done. All right, <laughs> not really. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is, um, obviously the main issue we have here is that this picture you know, does not fit in this at all. So I'm going to use uh, something that's you know a little bit more advanced, I guess, if you're just starting in Photoshop. but. Um, also not terribly complex. It's called a layer mask. And basically it's a way to kind of erase any picture or any layer that you have in Photoshop on the fly, but in a really nice non-destructive way, which means if, you know, sometime in the future I decide that I want some of that picture back or I want to undo that erasing, I can very easily fix that. So with this layer right here, which is this, you know, cloud and wave thing that I just dropped in, I'm going to go down here to my layer mask button. And you can see a new window has kind of popped up right over here next to the original picture. Now, what I'm gonna do here is actually go back to my paintbrush. And how this works, you'll notice that I actually have, instead of this selected, I have my layer mask selected, which is this white box right here. And basically the way this works is with my paintbrush, I paint with black if I want something to disappear, and I paint with white if I want it to actually come back. So I have my layer mask selected. I've got my paintbrush selected. You'll notice my main color is black. And basically what I'm gonna do is just kind of delete some of this. But what's really cool is even though it's disappearing, you'll notice in this layer mask, I have this black bar, which is the area I just painted. If I switch my color to white, I can actually just bring all that right back, which I can't stress enough how important layer masking is just to make your life so much easier. Because I can't tell you how many times I've been working on something and thinking like, you know, okay, I'm gonna erase this because I'm never gonna need it again. And then like the next day I get back into it, I'm like, oh man, I wish I had that back again. So definitely get into layer masking like as soon as you possibly can. So let's switch back to black as my main color. And I'm just gonna kind of erase where this building is. Okay, so we're getting there. It's starting to look pretty cool. So that's looking pretty sweet. Now, if you notice what I just did a sec, um, over here, 
I kind of went a little bit too far up this way. So again, one of the great things about layer masking is if I want to bring some of these clouds back, I can again just switch to white and then paint, you know, a little bit right here and that's going to bring those clouds back in. All right, so that's looking kind of cool. Now, at the moment, the clouds are looking pretty cool. It's looking very ominous, very, you know, kind of uh, comic book-esque. So I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit so those clouds aren't quite so bright because I want to keep the focus on the actual building itself. So by reducing the opacity, I'm actually able to just kind of fade those clouds a little bit into the background. And you know what? At this point, I'm pretty much done. Um, definitely, you know, have some fun with this experiment with your own photos. Just try it out. Uh, it's a pretty easy, quick technique. You can really just open something up and, and screw around with it in just a couple of minutes. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Um, feel free to check out my YouTube channel. I honestly usually do uh, music videos and, you know, guitar pedal demos and that kind of thing. But check those out. Feel free to check out my websites. And I'll be doing some more videos coming up here in the future. So thanks for watching.